In 1986, Canon Films produced 43 films. 43 films in one year. Well, I don't have that many in my collection, but I've got a few, and today I'm gonna share them all with you. So this is VHS Hall Canon Films Edition. For those of you who are not familiar with Canon Films, they were a company who became infamous during mostly the 80s for just mass producing these lower budgeted films with big stars in them. And there's a whole CD weaving story about Golan and Globus and all this kind of stuff. There's two documentaries out about it and they're both really good. The first documentary is Electric Boogaloo, <laughs> the untold story of Canon Films, and that's a play on a couple of their films called, there's Break In and Break In 2 Electric Boogaloo. And the second one is The Go-Go Boys, the inside story of Canon Films. And they were both released in 2014. I would highly recommend checking them out. The stories are insane about how they got their movies produced and financed and sold overseas by just using a poster. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I highly recommend you checking out at least one, if not both of those documentaries. I kind of liked the Electric Boogaloo one better. It had a little more fun and a little more style to it, but they're both really good. But enough about those movies. Let's talk about the Canon films that I have in my collection. First up, we have Chuck Norris and Louis Gossett Jr. in Firewalker. What is that? How the hell should I know? Matt, shoot it! Action superstar Chuck Norris, the Delta Force, and Oscar winner Louis Gossett Jr., an officer and a gentleman, joined forces for a spectacular, take your breath away adventure in wild pursuit of fabulous treasure and sheer swashbuckling thrills. After 10 years of life-threatening, money-losing expeditions, fortune hunters Max Donegan and Leo Porter, Norris and Gossett, are about to call it quits. Then a beautiful young woman, Melody Anderson, I have never heard of that woman in my life, appears with a map to the long-lost gold hordes of the ancient Aztecs. Dollar signs in their eyes, the trio embarks for the for darkest Guatemala, where it's one cliffhanger after another as they battle merciless mercenaries, hero-hungry jungle critters, and the supernaturally evil Aztec medicine man, El Coyote. <laughs> Holy shit. Supernaturally evil Aztec medicine man, El Coyote! Exclamation point. That's just fucking great. It's a free-spirited, head-over-heels romp into high-adrenaline action adventure. You're getting as bad as that fruitcake girl. Fruitcake? Wow. I'm a fruitcake? 106 minutes, and this came out in 1986, and it's rated PG. There's better be some gold up here. Get your butt. I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh God, there's a picture on the back here of Louis Gossett Jr. hanging by his arms and it looks like he has no pants on. But he does, but it looks like he doesn't. A pair of down and out fortune hunters cash in on high adventure. Chuck Norris and Lou Gossett in Firewalker. I cannot wait to find out uh, the powers of El Coyote. Up next, we have the Canon Films classic, Mannequin. Together. Hey, don't do that. You weren't so shy when you were creating me. You weren't so real. They make magic. Some guys have all the luck of finding a mannequin that, <laughs> that turns into Kim Cattrall. <laughs> You know, you're the first thing that created and then you feel like an artist. When shy young Jonathan sculpted his mannequin masterpiece, he gave her all the attributes of the girl of his dreams. But even Jonathan's wild dreams couldn't prepare him for what happens when his store window fantasy becomes a living, breathing, totally enchanting young lady. Andrew McCarthy, Pretty in Pink, stars as a down-and-out artist who creates and falls in love with 
a department store mannequin who comes very much to life as the vivacious Emmy, Kim Cattrall of Police Academy and Big Trouble in Little China. But soon, both Jonathan and his statuesque lady find themselves caught in the crossfire between two battling store owners. God, I forgot how dumb this plot is. And the bad guys will go to any length, even mannequin napping, to take advantage of Jonathan's most, almost, magical artistic talents. It's a wildly outrageous, romantic fantasy in the hilarious tradition of Splash. All the girl mannequins disappeared from the windows last night. Film at 11. Yes, my dear, your favorite. She is gone too. 90 minutes, and this came out in 1987. God, what was the theme song to this? Oh, it's Jennifer Jeff <laughs> Jefferson Starship. Nothing's gonna stop us now. I was like, I know there's a theme song. I can't remember what it was. Mannequin. There's also a sequel to this movie, Mannequin on the Move. My prince. Stay, stay back. Why are you running? Why am I running? Why are you moving? Yes! Well, this is a nice little nugget. LSD researcher Jerry Kelly convinced himself that this movie was real life, and he was arrested multiple times for speaking and even at times groping and undressing mannequins at several different retail shops. Eventually, he admitted that it was not the LSD that led him to this. You know I would never bother you when you're getting a piece of wood. And you've got a pretty good supporting cast. You've got Meshach Taylor, you've got Estelle Getty, James Spader is in it. Mannequin. Classic, classic 80s trash. <laughs> uh, look at him with the dummy. Who are you to criticize? Speaking of classic 80s, up next is the Delta Force. America's elite anti-terrorist commandos. Committed to destroy the enemies of freedom. The siege, the ordeal, the rescue. Swift and silent assault is their trade. Total mastery of commando warfare is their skill. They are America's elite strike team. They are the Delta Force. And they are led by Chuck Norris and Lee Marvin into the ultimate battle for freedom in this explosive action pick. Got this tape is just pulsing with testosterone. I can't take it. A fanatic band of ruthless terrorists hijacks a commercial jetliner full of American passengers. Landing in war-torn Beirut, the hijackers imprison their brutalized hostages in two heavily defended strongholds while the world waits at their mercy. But for the Delta Force, waiting time is over! Armed with the latest technology and combat weaponry, the small anti-terrorist squad strikes with the awesome force of a full-scale army. For America is being held hostage by a legion of political criminals. And that means full-scale war. With an all-star cast, the Delta Force offers high impact. High impact what? Just high impact, that's all it says. With an all-star cast, comma, the Delta Force offers high impact. It's just high impact. It's not high impact action or high impact stunts, high impact drama, just regular old high impact. 125 minutes and this came out in 1986. And of course there's lots of, there are Delta Force sequels also. I'm not sure how many. It looks like there were two sequels. This was Lee Marvin's final film based on the real life hijacking of TWA Flight 847. This is a hijack, let's go! It was extremely hot on the shooting location inside of this plane. And Shelley Winters famously told Menachem Golem, I'm gonna die, <laughs> I can't do this. And he replied to her, do it and then die. There's only two of them! Delta Force. Members of Delta Force and we're here to take you home. Up next we have an interesting one. Ryan O'Neill and Isabella Rossellini in Norman Mailer's Tough Guys Don't Dance. Both sides of my nature are obliged to express themselves. The enforcer and the maniac. And who do we have the honor of addressing? You never met 
the maniac. Writer, director, and two-time Pulitzer Prize winner Norman Mailer presents the most daring film noir murder thriller ever filmed. Ever. Starring Ryan O'Neill, Love Story, and Isabella Rossellini, Blue Velvet, it's the critically acclaimed Tough Guys Don't Dance. His memory fractured by a two-week drinking binge, writer and ex-con Tim Madden, played by O'Neill, awakens to find a pool of blood in his car, a woman's head in his marijuana stash, wow, this is fucking getting interesting, and a psychotic police chief, played by Wings Hauser, playing house with his former girlfriend, Isabella Rossellini. More mutilated corpses turn up, and Madden suspects everyone, including his ex-wife, a millionaire college pal, and himself, embarking on a bizarre, tortured odyssey through a past filled with faithless love, drugs, and decadence, Madden risks his life in a desperate search for the shocking, deadly truth. 110 minutes, and this came out in 1987. This sounds really intriguing. I want to see you die. I want to make you crazy. A love story shadowed by murder, a comedy laced with horror. That's a very odd description. I'm definitely gonna have to bump this one on my list of ones to watch. <laughs> because I don't know, finding a head in your marijuana stash, I, I can't, that's, I gotta see this. It was brilliant. I remember this movie now. It's got that infamous uh, acting scene of, of Ryan O'Neill at the beach reading the note and then just exclaiming, Oh God, oh man, oh God, oh man, over and over again. All right, now I, now I remember this film. I don't think we should talk about it. Unless you're prepared to kill them. Oh man, oh God, oh man, oh God, oh man. God, oh man. This was Norman Mailer's final feature film. This got nominated for a lot of Raspberry Awards. Worst Picture, Worst Actor, Worst Actress, Worst Supporting Actress, Worst Director, Worst New Star, Worst Screenplay, and it won Worst Director. And it, it tied Elaine May for Ishtar. That's how fucking bad this movie is. But I'm still intrigued about the, the head in the marijuana stash. Tough Guys Don't Dance. I guess they don't make good movies either. I just received the uh, comment cards from the first screening of my new film, Tough Guys Don't Dance. Bold, innovative, wonderful. Stinks. Next up, it looks like it says Bronson Assassination, the way they've got it on here, but it's just assassination. Uh, God, this tape is so light. There's like nothing to it. They were reluctant running mates in a race for their lives. This is this is just fucking weird cover. You've got like this little heart to heart esque photo of them, and underneath it, he's got a rocket launcher, and there's a helicopter exploding. It's just a very weird juxtaposition. It stars Charles Bronson, Jill Ireland, Stephen Elliott. Jan Gan Boyd, Randy Brooks, Michael Ansara, and William Prince. A vicious hired assassin is stalking the president's wife. And with the killer's orders coming from inside the White House, Agent Charles Bronson becomes the First Lady's last resort. Secret Service Agent J. Killian Bronson didn't want the job of protect protecting the president's wife, Jill Ireland. In fact, he didn't even like the woman. But then a psychotic terrorist gets her in his sights. And when the trail of violence leads to the White House itself, Killian is forced into a running cross-country battle to save America's first lady and himself. It's Bronson at his deadly best in an explosive, high-impact action thriller. I'll never look for you on one of these. 88 Minutes, released in 1987. This was the 16th and final time that married couple Bronson and Ireland did a film together. He is 65 years old in this movie. Fuck. Somebody just tried to kill you. Seems to be just a straight up action movie, but the front of it makes it look like a, like a bumbling comedy. It says action adventure, so. It's just odd. Sure that I missed a hell out of Nancy Reagan. 
And this thing is so light, there's, there's nothing to it. So cheaply reproduced. Assassination. Bronson, assassination. Ooh, next up we got a big box. Runaway train. Ooh, big box, I love big boxes. I got a big box, yes I do. I got a big box, how about you? I got a big box, yes I do. I got a big box, how about you? I think you don't know what you're saying. John Voight, Eric Roberts, and Rebecca de Mornay. There's a lot of text on the back of this. Bear with me. John Voight earned an Oscar nomination for Best Actor, and Eric Roberts won for Best Supporting Actor in this action thriller that was a major hit with audiences and critics from coast to coast. Voight and Roberts play convicts in a high-security prison who escape the inhumane treatment of Chief Guard Rankin and break out into the icy northwest wilderness. But the heat is on as Rankin heads out in force with the hounds. The cons flee onto a departing freight train only to find themselves prisoners yet again, this time of the speeding train as it hurtles towards certain derailment, its conductor dead of a sudden heart attack. Voight gives a performance that stunned the critics, with Roberts turning in yet another extraordinary characterization. David Sheehan of KNBC-TV in Los Angeles called their portrayals masterful. Award-winning Russian genius Andrei Konchalovsky directed this brilliant adaptation of an Akira Kurosawa screenplay. The New York Daily News called it one of the year's finest pictures, while the Los Angeles Times raved it's a success, a super thriller. Perhaps Variety summed it up the most succinctly, however, when it said, Runaway Train is a sensational picture. Catch it! Get it? It's a runaway train. You better go catch it. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm going. You coming? No, I've heard a lot of good things about this movie, actually. It's an hour and 52 minutes, and it came out in 1985. We make a hell of a team, don't we, man? Don't know nothing from nothing. Being round me is really stupid. I'm in war with the world, everybody in it. It was nominated for three Oscars, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor, and also Best Editing. And John Voight actually won a Golden Globe for his performance in this film. You want to be a tough guy? You want to be a legend? Go back! Shaka, come on! <laughs> this is a really cool little interesting tidbit. It's the film debut of Danny Trejo and Tommy Tiny Lister Jr. <laughs> I'm not from no bitch city. I'm from Compton, fool. So yeah, this would definitely be a good one to check out, Runaway Train. I've heard it's very good, the action's good, and the acting is very good. It's rated R. Let's have some fun. <laughs> if you want an exciting movie, try Runaway Train. This is a thrilling movie, says Pia Lindstrom of WNBC-TV New York. So, Pia says so. Go watch it. Runaway Train. And last, but certainly not least, we have the classic comedy, Going Bananas. Look there! A real lion! Lions! Big stop, Mo! Oh no, don't you dare. What are you doing? Mr. Mazamba, why are you stopping this vehicle? It's very educational for the boy. Well, the boy should learn from the vehicle while it's moving. This stars Dom DeLuise, Jimmy Walker, and David Mendenhall. Treat the whole family to a loony, laugh-packed adventure as Dom DeLuise from Cannonball Run 1 and 2 and Good Times Jimmy Walker find themselves going bananas deep in Africa's exotic Mamba Zamba land. Mamba, Mamba Zamba, Mamba Zomba, I don't know. It's Mamba Zomba land, I don't know what that means. Young David Mendenhall befriends a mischievous little chimpanzee only to discover the critter can talk. Soon his friends Joe, played by Dom DeLuise, and Mozambo, played by Jimmy Walker, God, this is just getting worse with every sentence, are going to, are going ape trying to save the chatty chimp after he's sold to the circus 
by Crooked Police Chief Herbert Lom, the pink from the Pink Panther. It's one cliffhanger after another as the three friends embark on a zany slapstick safari into non-stop monkey shines. Ah, uh, you are too kind. Uh, uh, Master Ben, me, eh? I think we found your monkey. Where? Beautiful. <laughs> 95 minutes, 1988. And the... Monkey is played by a person in a suit, and it is infamously bad. <laughs> infamously, infamously bad. Outrageous monkey business on the world's wackiest safari. Oh, Jimmy Walker. So embarrassing. Mr. Big Bad Joe, be quiet. It's got a 2.8 out of 10 on IMDb. I'm surprised it's that high. Oh, they talk about this movie in um, one of the canon documentaries about they were going to have Clyde the orangutan from the Every Which Way But Loose movies do it, but something went wrong, something went high haywire, I can't remember exactly what. So Deep Roy is the guy in the costume. Bonzo! And if you don't remember who David Mendenhall was, he was Sylvester Stallone's son in Over the Top. I'm just going to show a couple clips from this movie to kind of illustrate to you how horrible it is. I told you to stop, Bonzo. Bonzo loves Bonzo. Ben loves Bonzo. Banana. This? No, no, this is an apple, Bonzo. Battle? No. Apple. <laughs> Sorry. Bomb. 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 The banana? Going bananas. What an embarrassment. I'm sorry, Bonzo, isn't it? No goodbye. No goodbye. Well, that is going to do it for this VHS haul. If you have any Canon films in your collection, please share them with me down below in the comments. And also down below in the description are all my social media um, links if you want to follow me on Twitter and Facebook and... Uh, Instagram, I post really dumb stuff, but eh. If there are any certain type of videos in my collection that you guys want to see a VHS haul done on, just put that below in the comments. I've got a lot of different kinds of tapes, and I've got more than even what you see behind me here. I need more bookshelves. So until next time, this is Lindsay signing off. I will check you later.